On this episode of Golf Treasures, we're in the Big Apple to visit Ed Miller. Whoa. This guy's collection is one of the most remarkable and valuable we've ever seen. There's no way we're leaving empty-handed today. Then we're headed west to Phoenix, Arizona to meet with the legendary Jeff Ellis. Jeff literally wrote the Bible on golf memorabilia, but we can't let the fact that he's our idol get in the way of making a profit. What will it take for me to walk <laughs> out the door with this? Golf is one of the world's oldest games. It goes back centuries. And that's where we come in. I'm Ryan Carey. And I'm Bob Zafian. We're, We're Green, Green Jacket, Jacket Auctions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Original Silver King. This is the stuff we came for. I noticed the Arnold Palmer swing cologne. Whoa. We hunt down the most iconic pieces of golf history and then auction them off for prices most people wouldn't believe. It's got to be a $30,000 photo. What will it take for me to get this? The last auction sold for $60,000. Sold for $2 million. Holy smoke. From 18th century golf balls to clubs used by Bobby Jones. Whoa, this is what I'm talking about. And even one of the most sought after collectibles in the game. Kind of sends chills up your spine. We have some of the most demanding clients in the world. And we're constantly under the gun because there's always another auction right around the corner. I'd really like to walk out with those. I think we can make a ton of money. We're unraveling history and trying to make a few bucks as well. That's a good deal. I've never seen anything like that. This, this is Golf, golf Treasures. This is the Upper East Side? This is the Upper East Side. They let people like you in places like this? Well, they don't catch me. You know what? We know Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, I know what he wants. That's maybe a little hint of what's in here. Today, we're in New York City to see Ed Miller's collection. We've worked with Ed before, and his collection spans from vintage to modern and everything in between. And since Ed's a tough negotiator, I brought along a secret weapon to help sweeten the deal for us. Well, we always know what he wants. He never sells anything, though. My name is Ed Miller. I've been collecting for about 17 years. I have an architectural background, and I enjoy patent clubs. They just talk to me. I'm going to let you work your magic. And if that doesn't work, again, we got this. Ed, thanks for having us. It's great. Ed, how you doing? Great good, good seeing you hey, again. Bob. Come on in. Whoa. What do you like collecting? Apparently everything. Like Clubs are my passion. Guys, look around. Tell me what you like. OK, cool. Ryan, yeah. check this out. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? That is cool. Golfer's Magazine Trophy, 1919. Ed. Our customers love this kind of thing. It's old, it's got some deco look, great design to it. It's got the stag horns. This is when golf was, you know, an amateur game. It wasn't about the money. They were playing for pride and a little piece of hardware. I think we can get you at least $2,000 for this. Um, I have another idea. I'll be right back. Okay. Who's that? We gotta get this. Yeah, but there's, I saw better there's, stuff. Doesn't it look like a Viking would drink out of that thing? All right. Here's my thinking. Whoa. I'm thinking maybe we combine this excellent trophy. Okay. With here I have a uh, 1937 golf tournament in New York and New Jersey chapters. All right. Here's the 1958 golf championship. And here is a 1901 LYC golf links team match oh, wow. three handled That's cool. trophy. Yes. This is, this is fantastic. Yeah. Collectors today love trophies. They look good on a mantle or in a man cave. Having these for the auction would do really well for us. What did you have in mind for the four of these? You know, you might be looking at $3,000. Well, I'm feeling uh, $3,250. The reason why I'm not feeling $3,250, Ryan and I are going to spend probably $350 just to repair this. Obviously, you can see it needs some straightening. It's a little out of round. If we don't sell this, you'll be getting back a better trophy than you gave us. $3,000 is the number. Okay, that makes sense to me. Deal? You got a deal. Thanks, man. First deal. Right. First of many? Yes. Oh, wow. This is a Phelps long nose that was made by Stan and Goff at the turn of the century. Do you see the long? Bob, who's your favorite singer? Oh, Blue Eyes? Yeah, Frank Sinatra. No kidding. Is that's not a 1963, is it? It's an original 63. Invitational. With the caricature on there? 
Frank Sinatra is known for his love of golf, and in 1963, he actually hosted his own PGA Tour event. Each player at that event got their own putter. There's only about 200 that are known to exist. So this Frank Sinatra 1963 Invitational, they only held it one year. Tony Penna made about 200 of these and gave them out to all the contestants. This is one of the most expensive, one of the most valuable modern golf clubs that there is. Yes, and, and it's rare to find it in this condition. Sinatra was big. I mean, not only did he win Grammys, he actually won an Oscar. Yeah. I mean, well, Time Magazine, when he passed away, called him the greatest entertainer of the 20th century. Here's something interesting for you guys. I am lucky to have oh. a original Frank Sinatra invitation from the Canyon Country Club in Palm Springs, California. The oh, program wow. is autographed by the people who played in this tournament. Is there Sinatra in there? Uh, yes. There is a Frank Sinatra oh, right no in the way. middle. Seriously? Nobody's ever auctioned one of these Sinatra putters before. And the original program? This will bring in a lot of cash and be great for our business. We got to get them. I think we could get you uh, up to $25,000 at auction. Yeah, for the pair. I don't want to put it in the auction. I'm sorry, guys. We'll give you $15,000 right now. Whoa. Hey, relax. relax. Are we supposed to talk about this? We, uh, it's a good price. I'm going to I'm gonna pass on the 15. $18,000. I've never seen Ryan get this emotional over an item, ever. He's going rogue. It doesn't tempt me either. 20 grand right now. It doesn't tempt him. 20 grand right now. Again, just save your breath to cool your porridge. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I don't want to sell I'm it. I'm good with that, Ryan. Just $25,000. Dude, when are we ever gonna get this again? Why don't you guys just twenty five thousand dollars? I'm out of this. I'm out of this. Twenty five thousand dollars. Dude, we're at Ed Miller's house in a heated debate over whether we can go home with his Frank Sinatra putter and original program. Ryan is losing his head over this putter. It's perfect for our auction. I know Bob and I haven't talked about spending this kind of money today, but we've never seen this piece before. Sometimes I gotta do what I gotta do. We'll give you twenty-five thousand dollars. You'll give him twenty-five right thousand. You'll give him. I'm not. I'm not part of this. When are we ever gonna get this again? Why don't you guys just twenty-five thousand dollars? I'm out of this. Let me walk I'm out still, of here. I'm still not gonna sell it. I, just I hate to. You. I hate to disappoint you. I'm gonna pass. I have okay. something else. I think you guys might be interested in. Let's go take a look at it. Let's see what you got. All right. I'm a little upset that I didn't win that negotiation. He didn't even bite. But I'd be more upset if I didn't try. Ah, putters. Whoa, these, are, these are the ones I like. Scotty Cameron is a legendary club maker. His putters have been used by Rory McIlroy, Phil Mickelson, and Adam Scott, just to name a few. So th the cool thing about Scotty Cameron is he got his first big break when Bernard Longer won the 93 Masters. And he gets his next break a couple years later when he signs with Titleist. Then Tiger Woods starts using his putter. And now, Scotty Cameron stuff, they sell for a couple thousand dollars per putter just because of that. Price ranges go five figures. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, yeah. And now this one, is this what I think it is? The Scotty Dale? It is. This is the first one of six made. So this is what Tiger Woods was using early in his career. And Tiger should have been disqualified for using this to win one of his first tournaments, right? Yes, the Walt Disney uh, tournament, I believe. It was his second tournament. The second ever victory in 1996. Once somebody realized it, it kind of, the, the club disappeared, right? And, I remember and that. I'll just show you. The old putter that Scotty used with a longer hosel and a bigger socket. The hosel is the neck of the club head that the shaft goes into. This is the number one of six victory putters he made for that event. This putter right here was illegal. This one was perfectly legal. A small amount of difference in the hosel makes it illegal versus legal, but Tiger Woods won with the technically illegal putter. Shortly after that tournament happened, though, that putter disappeared, this one arrived on the market. So Tiger probably didn't know it was illegal at the time. I'm sure he didn't. But this day and age, with the internet and everything, yes. we would have found out immediately he would have been disqualified. Tiger Woods' second victory would have never happened. These two putters have arguably the most important name in golf attached to them, and they're made by Scotty Cameron. We've got to get them. OK, now this is what I really want for the auction here. I think we'll get you at least $5,000 combined for both those putters. Well, uh, given the history of these clubs, I, I'm looking for a minimum of 
$10,500. What we're prepared to do is put $7,500 in your pocket right now. No auction, straight cash offer to take those two putters right now. I'm gonna pass. You got Tiger Woods involved. You have one of only six made. I have an idea that um, I'm gonna wanna talk to Ryan about. Stay right there. All right. Man, what, what are you thinking right now? We could trade him these plus some cash. The box with us. Yeah. He's never gonna go for that. We trade him, we get those, we're gonna make good money. That's a pretty good trade bait. It's great. Let's go back over there. Okay. It's time to see if my secret stash will do the trick. We got there. You're gonna enjoy these. Vintage golf ball boxes. I just love golf ball boxes. Everything about golf ball boxes is a piece of art. Beautiful colors, beautiful graphics. These golf ball boxes from the early 1900s are very valuable. Worth several hundred dollars a piece. Most people threw them out, so very few exist. This is the only one we've ever seen before. Fantastic box. That is a tin box. You have one of those already? I don't. All right. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice condition? Yes. You've got a no-cut box. I like these. These were by the Faultless Rubber Company. We've got the Line Colonial Ball. Fantastic. And last but not least, we got the Lynx. Yep. That's eight boxes that you don't have that you need for your collection for two Scotty Cameron putters. I'm going to give you both these putters. I'm going to take these eight ball boxes, and I'm going to ask for $6,000. How about those eight ball boxes and $5,000? <sighs> you got it. It's a deal. Enjoy those cameras. Yes, Ryan, thank you. I told you I should have brought those. Perfect. Great. Yes. Gonna miss those. Great. Well, you'll, you'll find a good home. Here we are, guys. Here we are. Where's all the golf stuff? I'm liking Phoenix so far. I like this desert feel. I'm going to like it a little bit more if we uh, end up getting some nice items here. Today, we're in Phoenix, here to see Jeff Ellis, the preeminent golf club collector in the world. Jeff Ellis wrote the Bible for golf club collectors called The Club Maker's Art. That's how we know him. He's pretty much famous in our golf collecting world. I mean, if we can tap into this vintage golf club market, that could be huge. Jeff, Bob Zafian. Bob, my pleasure. Come on in. Big, big fans. We've read your book a thousand times. You use it every day, almost. My name is Jeff Ellis, and I collect antique golf clubs. Every piece I own, to me, has a very meaningful place in the game that I love. Brian and Bob face a big challenge in going home with any gloves from my collection today, but it won't be impossible. You're like a celebrity to us, so yeah. we're like like little kids being here. This yeah. is like just really so cool. Well, you're doing great things for the collecting world, and I appreciate that. Lead great. the way. Let's see great. what we got. All right. Finally, a chance to see Jeff Ellis' personal collection. He's known as the greatest golf club collector in the entire world. We couldn't be more excited. Here we are, guys. Here we are. I, I see pianos. You know, where's all the golf stuff? This isn't what we usually say. Well, this is unexpected. I want to show you the clubs. They're right over here in these ah, two cases. Not on display. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of money sitting there. He opens up the first chest, and we see many things that I've never seen before. This club here is for a two-arm golfer, but it's only for use with one arm. He's got all kinds of cool, unique clubs. He's got this club made for uh, one-arm people after uh, losing their arm in World War I, and, and you know, trying to swing with that thing was really cool. You tap the ball in the hole. It seems like he got a lot of patent-type clubs in here. Most of these clubs are between 1890 and 1920. These clubs predated the golf governing bodies, you know, coming up with all these rules of golf to, to, to you know, really simplify the game and make sure that manufacturers didn't come up with all these crazy ideas for golf clubs. And so it was really cool seeing these because most of them we hadn't seen before. 
This is a simplex club, and it was patented in 1907, and it is perfect condition. He's got this really cool, futuristic-looking club called the Simplex, center-shafted, early 1900s. We'd never really seen one before. What would you need to get for something like this? Oh, well, Ryan, you should know this club is in perfect condition. It's the original grip, the original shaft, the head has not been used hardly at all. There's very few nicks anywhere, and aluminum dents real easy. This is no dents. It's beautiful condition. The maker's mark and patent is on there. Um, if I were to put a number on it, I would say I'd have to get at least a $1,000. This puts us in an awkward position. Yeah, I mean, this guy wrote the book. I mean, this is where we go to get the prices. I think we'll blow past $1,000, and, and maybe a lot more. I'd love to shake your hand on this, walk away with this, and go move on to the next thing. OK, you, you got to start. All right. The real cool thing about Jeff's collection is a golf club that's worth $1,000 is going to sell for $2,000 just because of the pedigree coming from the Jeff Ellis collection. On to case number two. We can't wait to see what Jeff has left. Go. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at this. Oh, my God. Whoa. Are you serious? I think that that is one of the greatest golf artifacts a person can know. This gives me chills. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at this. Jeff Ellis has invited us into his home to show us his great club collection. Yeah, he's been a tough negotiator, but now he's showing us the coolest club we've ever seen. Oh, my God. Wow. That's a 1700s square toe iron. Oh, my God. One of the only known. It's a 1700s square toe club. The earliest ever golf irons were called square toes. Only a handful of examples are known to exist, and Jeff actually has one. This thing is the rarest thing I've ever held in my hands. This is beautiful. I mean, this is like artwork. And it's worth a couple hundred thousand dollars. This is crazy. This club actually sold in 1992 for $200,000. What will it take for me to walk <laughs> out the door with this? I could give you whatever reserve you needed. If we could get this square-toed golf club, this would make our year. This would be a highlight piece that would, that would just really be the best thing that we could get for our auction. Is there any chance we could convince you to let us try to sell this for you? Not today. It was almost like he was teasing us with this thing. It's this the thing. best club I've ever owned in my 30 some odd years of collecting. So after I knew we weren't going to get the square toe, I kind of put it back and, you know, all sad. And then Jeff reaches over and there's a Tom Morris long nose club. This club here is Tom Morris. Oh. Tom Morris also won four British Opens. It's unbelievable. It doesn't get any bigger than Tom Morris. Uh, he's the reason why we have 18 holes of golf, right? Tom Morris really revolutionized the game of golf. When he started, he was just a lowly caddy. By the time he died, the, the entire golf world knew who he was. Jeff, if we could get $3,000 minimum at auction, can we walk out of here with this today? Do you think you can get $3,000 at auction? I think we get at least $3,000. These things are sold for as much as $15,000 12, 15 years ago. We've been striking out today. We really need to get our hands on this club. We got a deal. 3000 Sounds like a deal to me. OK. okay. Great. This is, this is going to make our auction. It's so cool just to, just to hold something like this, to, to, to hold a club that old Tom Morris made himself. Is there anything else before we leave that you want to show us? There is, but it's in the other room. Well, come on in, you guys. This is my office. This is clearly where Jeff keeps all of his odds and ends. He's got golf magazines. He's got golf balls. He's got golf ball molds. He's got a little of everything in this room. This is for us to dig around and see if we can find anything we want. This is neat. No, this appears to be George Herbert Walker Bush's golf bag. This was a bag that was made for a second presidential term, which never, never happened. happened. Just never was given to him. I, I want this bag. Very few people know, not only is George Bush in the World Golf Hall of Fame, his father and grandfather were actually presidents of the USGA back in the day. What kind of number do you think you can get for this thing? Jeff, golf bags are really hot right now. This would be perfect for our auction. It's without question, easily $2,000 golf bag. Problem is, I don't know where I can get another one. Well, but first don't of need all, another one. this doesn't fit in your collection. You have 19th century golf clubs in a presidential golf and bag. And he lost. Take that money, go out and get yourself an antique bag, put your clubs back in. 
And we'll both be happy? We'll both be All very right. happy. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. That's a surprising one. Expect to see that That's in this great collection. Piece. We're thrilled to get this golf bag, but while we're in the home of one of our idols, we got to see what else he has. Plus, my stuff is locked. Whoa! Huh. I opened this box, and is a feathery golf ball from the 1800s, just sitting in this little cardboard box. How old is this ball? William and John Burley were making balls together between 1838 and 1844. This is probably the finest feathery I've ever seen in my life. I think that that is one of the greatest golf artifacts a person can own. I'll let you set the reserve of what you think would be a fair reserve. OK. OK. But I expect to see a number upwards of $10,000 at the end of the day if you're telling me that you think you can get that. Until an item meets a reserve, it means it's not going to get sold. So if something has a reserve of 5000 and a bid is 2000 3000 it's still not going to sell. I think a reserve of $5,000. If you're able to deliver on this, that would go a long way to me trusting you as a consign other clubs that are worth far more than that. Well, there's a lot at stake, and we're gonna make it happen. Get a deal? We got a deal. All right. All right. Eight. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right, all right. I think today was definitely a success. It's always good when you walk away with something that you haven't seen too often. Jeff's a rock star in our little collecting world, and so it was great just to meet him. The fact that we actually got items that we can make money on makes the trip even better. Our plan of sweeten up Ed really, really worked. Not only did we walk away with four great trophies, but two fantastic Scotty Cameron butters. Earlier at Jeff's house, we scored a George Bush golf bag, a feathery golf ball, and two vintage golf clubs. All in all, this was a great week.